We're going to draw a banana slug today. So, we're just going to be drawing the banana slug in on the ground, around the redwood forest, on the ground where things have dropped. And I want to show you a picture. This is one of my favorite Redwood books here. It's Jason Chin. And it's about a little boy who learns about the Redwood Forest and magically comes into the forest and learns about some of the wonderful, mysterious things that happen in the Redwood trees. And I, he goes all the way to the tippy top, to the canopy, and Wow, at the top of the tree, it could be 200 feet up, these little voles, it could be salamanders, and look, banana slugs could be all the way at the top, a millipede over here. But mostly banana slugs really want to be on the ground, and they want to be underneath redwood trees. So this is what we're going to need. We're going to need a Sharpie. Um, I'd like to see if you had just an ordinary pencil, and if you have colored pencils, that would be great. I use watercolored pencils, which I really like to use because when you put water on these pencils, oh, the color looks so wonderful. But you could use just ordinary pencils too. So what we're going to do, I'm actually using this because it'll be a darker color for you to see. So let's start out with our awesome banana slug. And that's kind of like a banana. You know, here we go. But look, when we get over here, let's give it the head part. And look, it has like outer space antenna that are actually eyeballs. Look, those are eyeballs. Isn't that the coolest thing? Eyeballs up there. So then, and it comes back down. And these are its little feelers so that it actually can smell and see where it's going. And right about in here is its mouth, right? But then I want to show you something else that's way cool. This part that I'm making right here, this is its feet. It's called a foot, not feet. It's called a foot. One foot. It has one foot. And it moves really slowly on one foot and leaves awesome slime all over the place. And it glistens. And that's how it moves, is with this one foot. And then on the back here, this is almost, I call it a saddle, but it's actually called a mantle. A mantle up here. But then there's a hole in the mantle. That's a hole in it. And that's how it breathes. So eyeballs, how it breathes, how it feels and smells, and how it walks. It's kind of cool. So the next thing that we're going to do, though, it's in habitat and it's in the redwood forest. So let's include some redwood cones. Here's a redwood cone right here. And so we're going to include, if this one wants to come off here, here we go, a redwood cone. There we go. And so a redwood cone is just the house for the seeds. So what we're going to do, and they'll fall. They'll fall when a storm comes or when there's just time because the seeds are all gone. And they have kind of a rough exterior. And sometimes they do have some other neat little tiny needle leaves on it like that. And then it's kind of open with holes in it where the seeds kind of fall out. And so it's rough looking. Okay, so but let's do a couple of these. Let's see if I have another one here. Yeah, we'll do. We'll just use this one and do a couple of these here. So let's have another one that fell out over here. Here's another one that fell out over here. And, you know, there's a certain time after it no longer has the seeds that it can now fall, become dirt. It can just be part of the mud in the red in the forest, and it's it's it does another thing with its life. And um, so I'm going to do one more because I really like redwood cones here. There. Now, banana slugs are so interesting about what they eat. They do eat some dead things, but they also eat some interesting live things. And most of the live things they eat are things that actually aren't normal for the redwood forest. They don't eat baby redwood trees. They don't. They they eat things that maybe aren't unusual for the redwood forest, and so they'll eat those things, and that might even compete with the baby redwood trees. So it's really helping the redwood trees in its way. So here's the needle leaves, and we could pretend that this one has fallen. Maybe it's really old. Or maybe oh, it's old. It's a couple hundred years old, maybe. And you know, redwood trees can be 
a thousand years old. They could be even two thousand years old, and they just grow right along the coast of California and Oregon. And they, um, this is the only place in the whole wide world they grow. It's just. Here. That's why they're pretty magical. They're huge and they create their own environment that includes banana slugs. So I did that one there. Okay, I'm going to do another one over here because I really like this. And it's if it's under the redwood trees, there's going to be a lot of this, a lot of this under their pieces of the redwoods that fell. Now you're going to spend a little bit more time than I am doing this but I just wanted to give you can put lots of things under the redwood trees just think about what could fall what could be there what are the other plants that might be there um, when you're when you're drawing so here's another thing oh, this is kind of cool I'm going to try to put this over here for you to see look this is sorrel it's called redwood sorrel and it's really interesting because it kind of looks like it has a hearts. Look at that, hearts. There. So we're going to, and it grows like, it grows together. One leaf looks like three hearts together like that, right? And it grows together in a carpet. It grows together in a carpet. And they really, all their roots are entwined together. And they just spread, and they spread and make beautiful carpets. They like to be in the same exact place as redwood trees like to be in. It likes to be moist. And redwood trees have this magic about them. They're actually able to take water out of the air and, and, and rain. It actually can rain on a foggy day. And it's like drops of rain. You need an umbrella to go under a redwood tree on a foggy day. And it it waters all the things around, including sorrel, baby redwoods, banana slugs, salamanders, and other things out there. So maybe I'll just do one more over here. Okay. Now, the other things that might be here, it could be some leaves that fell. Maybe this is along a river, because redwoods like some moisture, and we could have a willow leaf. This could be a willow leaf that just flew off from, from, the, from uh, living on the river. So, or maybe we have another one. This could be a wild plum. There we go, a wild plum leaf that maybe it's fall and it's time for it to fall. Okay, now, the next thing we're going to do is use our Sharpies. Now this Sharpie has a very fine point. Very fine point, I think I use this one here. Very fine point, not the fat ones. And all we're going to do is outline, outline, outline wherever you've already done your pencil work, right? And get you to you get an opportunity to revisit where you are and here we are and those eyeballs are so cool they look like aliens don't they okay and here's that mantle and the hole where they are able to breathe don't forget that foot gotta have that foot that slimy foot there we go okay Good. Okay, and now we're going to come back in here and get our redwood sorrel. A redwood sorrel. People think it kind of looks like clover, which it kind of does, but it isn't clover. And you can actually even eat this. It, it tastes like lemon. Sometimes in the spring when the leaves are really young and tender, I'll pick some of this to put in a salad. It tastes so good. It's like lemon. Have you ever had sour grass? This is exactly what it tastes like. It's sour grass. And so, and it has the same things in there that make it taste that way too. Okay, so here we go. We've got some of this. So, good. Okay, and we're going to finish up our redwood cones here. And remember, they're really rough. They're really rough, so don't 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 try to make smooth lines. You you don't need to do that. 
Okay, you don't need to make smooth lines for these. And then here's our red ones here. Now, I really like to do it on both sides because I really want to be able to fill this in. I'm making my own coloring book, and I want to be able to fill this in with color, right? So if you just put a line there, you can't fill the line in with color. But if I make a little a little bit of space in here like that, then I can come back in and put color in there. And we are going to be putting color in layers and layers of color. So here's another one here, and I'm going to make it look, look rough. It is rough. I'm going to come back over here. It's okay. We don't want a straight line. We want it to look kind of rough. Okay, and we have this here, and these are the holes where those itsy bitsy bitsy seeds come out. Just the tiniest of the seeds are the size of the point right there. They're tiny, tiny, tiny. You don't even see them. They're so tiny. There, okay. Now, let's have another one here. Well, we put a lot of stuff on the ground, didn't we? But this stuff would be on the ground because they really, banana slugs almost always just want to be under redwood trees. Other moist places, maybe on a rotten log or around some place that has moisture because they're really full of moisture. If you look at them, they glisten. And they're so interesting that they're yellow, right? There we go. Okay, and then here's this leaf. I was going to call it the wild plum leaf. And maybe it fell because it's fall. And this could be the willow leaves that were falling from it where it's growing along the river. And the river could be there. And look, we did that. So the next part we're going to do, even though you could be using your regular colored pencils at home, if you happen to have any watercolored pencils, oh my gosh, they're so wonderful. If you could use those, you should use those, okay? But either way, this is going to be beautiful. So the first thing I'm going to do here is, it's yellow. It's a banana slug. So this is sun yellow. So let's come right in here and give this awesome banana slug some color here. The mantle, don't forget the mantle and its breathing hole. Don't forget its feet. And do you see I'm not putting a lot of color on this, right? There's a lot of open areas because I actually want to be able to put more color on. So this is lemon yellow, lemon yellow. So we're gonna come back over here and put a little bit more over here. There we go, more color. Okay, all right, and maybe even a tiny bit of slightly darker color because down towards the bottom, you're going to find that there'll be kind of shadows. It's a little bit darker. The feet will be a tiny bit darker maybe. Under the mantle, maybe a little bit darker like that. And the thing is, we're actually going to be blending these colors with water in a short while. So you want more than one color, and you want layers. So this is layers right here, right? So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start some layers on my redwoods, right? So this is kind of a nice brown here, but you don't want just one brown. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You want a few browns. So I'm gonna get another one over here. This is slightly dark. And the redwood cones are dark. They're pretty dark. Look, 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 look. They're pretty dark, see that? pretty dark. So we want to, no, they're not black, they're just kind of dark brown, but there'll be light parts to it. There's light, part, light parts to it for sure. Okay, so I'm going to get some of that and look, maybe a little bit more color here. And let's see if we can find um, a little brighter color here. How about over here? There we go. A little bit of this. That's great. Okay, good. And now, remember where those our, our soil. Our soil has kind of a dark green, almost bluish look. So I'm going to pick this color here to add. And remember, we're doing layers. Whether you're using watercolored pencils or whether you're using your co regular colored pencils, the key is layers. That means more than one color because you're an artist. An artist get to make their own colors. So, and I'm gonna come back over here, and maybe a little bit more here, and let's get this uh, this uh, wild plum a nice look there. There, and we're gonna add these colors. Add these colors in here. 
a little bit more for our willow. And now I might even spend a little time coming back in here. Here, and we'll make this one a green one. Maybe, maybe it just got blown off the tree in a wind or something. So this one will be green mostly. And let's make this other one over here up one that maybe has been living up in that tree for, oh, I don't know, a few hundred years. And it's time to be on the ground now because it, it died and now it's gonna turn into dirt. And so, well, we're going to do this one here. So it'll be brown. It'll be brown, and it, it is ready to become a part of the bottom of the redwood canopy area. There. Okay, we'll put a little bit of brown in here. That's good. Okay. Maybe we want a bit of brown in some of these colors in here. Okay, and the last thing here I'm going to add is a little bit brighter here in here and let's see Linda likes to add a lot of extra yellow to here and here and here and I think we're almost done we're almost done oh so it can't be brown it ca can't be white it has to be, have some color a little bit of texture here so we're actually going to be adding different kinds of colors in here and going in different directions because we want there to be some kind of texture that's the ground this is the ground here and we don't want to just leave it white because it's not white so here's the thing that as an artist you get to pick a few different ways to do this. And when you apply water to this, all these colors will blend together and be unique. So it almost doesn't matter what colors, because if you look at dirt, dirt is really a lot of colors. If you look at it really, 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 really closely, so all different kinds of colors in dirt. So there we go. So I'm going to say, okay, I think I'm done here. Let's be done. Let's be done with that. And so the very next thing we'll be doing now is that we are going to be adding water. Now, if you didn't have watercolored pencils, that's okay. You can keep adding more and more layers, right? But right now, color. But right now, we're ready with our watercolored pencils. And you can't do this if you have regular pencils. But if you have watercolored pencils, you can see how bright everything gets. When you put the water on it, look at how bright that looks. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. There, so you might, if you don't have watercolor pencils at home, you might want some because they're really fun. So here I go. Blending, remember all those colors I put in all these places? I said, oh, I need a little of this, a little of that. But what happens is that you blend it with the water and all those colors make a brand new color whatever color you picked whatever color you picked and then here we are over here for our sorrel oh yes oh sorrel oh you're so good look at all that sorrel there good and you can always after it dries you can even add more color if you want there yeah, now, I'm kind of rushing just so you can see how this works, but I want you to know that really it's better not to be rushing, okay? It's better just to take your time and enjoy how beautiful your artwork is going to be. And there we are. It's a... Oh, oh, oh I forgot. Let's get that ground. Ground, ground, ground. Hello, ground. Let's get that ground. Yeah, we got it. There. And we're just going to add a little bit of water. It's still got the texture to it, right? Still got that texture to it. 